Carbohydrates are absolutely essential for triathletes to race as fast as possible, and there's no two ways about it. But the question is whether you should eat them in the hour before your race. There are concerns about it lowering your blood sugar, which would mean you aren't able to supply your muscles with glucose, so physically you won't be able to race as well as possible. And it might make you feel worse too, so mentally, your struggle. We're going to break it down in this video so you can go into your race without wondering whether or not you should have had an extra gel or two before the starting gun. So what is up nutrition nerds? Welcome to another video. My name is James and I'm a sport nutritionist and I race triathlons too so I love to chat about this sort of thing. Now I've been there. It's race morning and everyone's nervous. Someone's complaining about not being able to eat because they feel sick and someone else is glugging on a drink or shotting a gel and it makes you wonder whether you should be doing the same. And there's different advice out there. Some sources will say it's fine to eat in the hour before you race, and some say that you should avoid it. Now, this all stems back from the 1970s when scientists were investigating the performance effects of carbohydrates on exercise. One of the studies suggested there was a negative effect when carbohydrates were consumed in the hours before exercise, and as a result for many years, the take home message afterwards was to avoid carbs in the hour before a race. The underlying reason was to do with an athlete's blood sugar or blood glucose, and the changes that happen in response to both consuming carbohydrates and exercise. When you consume glucose, which is a carbohydrate, it gets absorbed into your bloodstream, and as a result, your blood glucose levels rise. In response, your insulin levels rise too, because insulin acts as a key to let glucose into your cells, so you can then create energy. This is a totally normal process, and we need it, and it happens every day, multiple times. Now, when you exercise, you don't have the initial spike of glucose, but you usually do instead get a bit of a drop in your blood sugar because your muscles need more energy. So they pull some glucose into your muscle cells and that drops your blood sugar a bit. But what happens when you combine consuming carbohydrates with exercising is the important part. So we get that same upward spike in glucose from consuming carbs, but then because we're starting to exercise whilst that peak is high and there's lots of insulin around, the effect is amplified and so our blood sugar goes lower than it normally would before coming back to the baseline. This is termed rebound hypoglycemia and it's the potential mechanism behind the concern over eating carbs in the hour before exercise. So the theory is there and that study in the 1970s suggested this was bad for athletes. Since then though, there's been quite a lot more research into this topic and actually, the evidence suggests that this probably isn't as big an issue as originally thought. Firstly, it doesn't happen to every athlete. And secondly, in the majority of athletes where their blood sugar did drop, it didn't actually cause any negative effects. So by that, I mean that they tested the athlete's blood sugar levels whilst they were exercising. And although they found it to be low, the athletes didn't report that the exercise they were performing felt more difficult and their performance didn't objectively worsen. And as we do know that carbohydrates are overwhelmingly beneficial for athletes, especially when it comes to an event like a triathlon, the guidance has been slowly changing to say that for the most part, it's actually beneficial to consume carbs in the hour before a race. There are some caveats to that though, and we're gonna run through them and I'm going to show you some of my own data to explain this. So some athletes do seem to suffer from this drop in blood sugar. They do feel worse and their performance will suffer. Now, back in the winter, I did some power testing whilst experimenting with these Super Sapiens glucose monitors. So one like this. This is what happened when I consumed carbs before doing a 60 minute power test. Basically, my blood glucose almost perfectly matched that theoretical one that I mentioned. And I can tell you that I absolutely did struggle at the period where my sugar levels dropped. I found it difficult to hold my power and I had to drop it down and down again until I slowly felt better and could build it back up. I didn't know what my blood sugar levels were doing at the time, by the way, because I only looked at the data in retrospect because I didn't want it to mentally impact my performance at the time. Compare that to when I did the same testing fasted 
and I felt pretty good. There is a significant difference here. My power between the two tests was basically the same as well, and really my well fuel test should have been far, far better. Now this is my own data and yours might not be the same. And currently I can't actually be 100% sure that I was truly affected by this. So I need to do more testing to explore it. Hmm, <laughs> fun. And I am planning on doing just that. I've got some of these Super Sapiens patches on at the moment and collecting data for upcoming videos. So if you are interested in that, then make sure that you do press subscribe and the notification icon. So I guess now we come back to the big point of what does this mean for you and how do you use this information? Well, the answer here is to experiment. The data suggests that most athletes are fine with consuming carbs in the hour before exercise and overall it should help with performance. So for most triathletes, it's probably a good idea to have carbs if it fits as part of your overall nutrition plan. But as with most things exercise related, there's an element of individuality and you need to practice it to make sure that it works. Generally, the advice is that people who genuinely do have this rebound hypoglycemia and feel the effects of it notice a clear worsening in their performance. And so that's what you're trying to figure out. Consider it like a fun science experiment. Try to work out whether you actually get this problem at all or whether you actually just feel great and you feel pumped up without any issues. If you do think that you suffer from it, there are a few things that you can try. Try experimenting with carb timings before exercise. You could try 60 minutes, 45 minutes, 30 minutes, or even 10 or 15 minutes before you start. You could include some high intensity sprints in the warm up to stimulate liver glucose output. Try different types of carb products to see if some produce more noticeable effect than others. You could take at least one gram of carbs per kilogram of body weight. Basically here you're making sure that you consume enough carbs that is worth the reactive hypoglycemia as you'll then get more benefit overall. If those strategies fail, then consume your last lot of carbs at least 90 minutes before your race. You could also try a continuous glucose monitor like that provided by Super Sapiens so you can get some objective glucose measurements, but you don't have to. This isn't a slice like for Super Sapiens. I'm not sponsored by them or have any affiliation. The bottom line is that it's individual and like with most things nutrition, it's worth testing it. If you can tolerate carbs in the hour before a race, particularly a race that is going to last more than 90 minutes, then you probably should because it's likely that it will benefit you. And whilst we're on the racing theme, if you're interested in some nutrition tips to run a faster 5K, then I've linked a video next to me here where I run through this along with another video you might find useful. So have a great day, enjoy your racing, and I'll catch you soon.